Hi everyone, my name's Caleb Coles. I'm an Australian singer-songwriter and today we're gonna to be looking at how the pros use mic technique. So I have set up here my microphone. This is a dynamic microphone, the type of microphone that are used in live performances. So today we are gonna be looking at live performance, how singers use these microphones, not only to pick up the sound, but actually use it as an instrument to be able to convey and create the sounds they want in a live performance. This video is not only for those who are singers, but also for those who are generally interested in how their favorite performers and singers use microphones. But if you do happen to be a singer or performer wanting to learn more about your craft, make sure to watch through to the end, because at the end, I've got a few extra tips for those who are looking to implement these techniques. If you enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. Now the first technique we are gonna look at today is called the proximity effect. The proximity effect is the term used to being close to the microphone and the tone that produces. When you're close to the mic, it increases the bass response. In other words, when you're very close to the mic, it tends to exaggerate the low sounds, where when you're further away from the mic, it less exaggerates those low sounds. This effect therefore is used often in radio where they use dynamic mics and they speak right into it in order to create this effect. But it is also used by singers when they're in their low range to exaggerate the low tone to their voice. Here are a few clips of some singers using the proximity effect to create a great deep low tone. So to implement this technique, all you really need to do is speak nice and close to the mic or sing deep into the mic. Here is a few examples of the difference in tone created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gain match these two signals, which means I'm going to make sure that the volume is exactly the same after I process this so that what you're hearing is really just the difference in tone. Mama, she has taught me well, told me when I was young. Son, your life's an open book. Don't close it for it's done. Mama, she has taught me well, told me when I was young. Son, your life's an open book. Don't close it for it's done. There you can see an example of the proximity effect in action. Now our second technique for today we're gonna to be looking at is called tonal control. I've called it this because it's simply learning how to use the sweet spot in the microphone to match the tone you're looking for. This is really an extension on the proximity effect. When you know that when you're very close to the mic, it creates a low sound. That means when you're further off the mic, it creates a different tone. Now, often what you'll be looking for is to hone in on a very specific ring in order to make the tone shine. In other words, you get used to how a difference in the mic positioning will alter the tone. And after a certain amount of time of singing live, you get to know your voice. So for instance, there's often a high ring that is associated with a powerful note. Now, if you're too close to the mic and you hit a powerful note, it's not gonna accentuate the ring, it's gonna muffle the sound and create that proximity effect. Let me give you an example. Free! Now, when I did that, you could hear it was quite muffly because of the proximity effect. But if I back off the mic just slightly and aim to get that ring hitting the diaphragm of the microphone just perfectly, it sounds like this. Free! Free! 
See, what I'm doing is I'm using an eval and that ring on the eval, I'm aiming to hit that diaphragm of the microphone perfectly to give it its most vibrant tone. So you can go even further off the mic if you want to create a thinner tone, which sometimes you might want. You might want to manipulate your tones in all kinds of ways. And simply moving the microphone will not only change the volume, but it will also change the tone. The third technique I want to talk about is transient control. A transient is a sudden burst of energy, an oscillation of sound. Now, transients in this context often refers to loud, sudden noises. So not only p sounds, the plosives are transients, but also often when you go for a high note, for instance, or a suddenly loud note, the transients will suddenly hit the microphone. Now, this might cause the sound guy to either want to compress your voice a lot or to turn you down. And that might not be what you want. So a great way you can use the microphone to its utmost is to move it away slightly when you know you're going to make a sudden burst of sound and then go back into a normal sound. Here are a few clips and a few examples of people controlling the transients by their mic positioning. Let me give you an example. I'm going to sing a note. I'm actually going to sing a note from SOS. I'm going to show you how if I don't move the mic back a little bit, it creates a very harsh sound. So it goes like this. From above. Now you could hear when I went above there, it was very hard hitting. And I'm already running this microphone through a compressor a compressor being a bit of technology that tries to eliminate some of those sounds. And even then, you could still hear how pronounced that loud noise was. So what you might do is go like this. From above! Notice how I backed off the mic and then brought it back a little bit closer in order to just control some of those transients. Now, you can use this technique in a whole variety of ways. If you're even rappers or other people might use it in order to pronounce the transients or take them away. It's best just to be aware of this phenomenon so that you can best utilize this technique or you can watch your favorite singers utilize it. The next technique we're going to look at has to do with intentional fade ins and fade out of notes. So this one is called stylistic volume. Now, it kind of goes without saying that the microphone moving it will, you know, change the volume. So I haven't included that as a specific one. But this one is a very intentional fade in or fade out that is very pronounced, taking the mic away almost entirely from your mouth and then bringing it closer or vice versa at the start or ends of notes. Here's a few clips of people using this in a very intentional way. Now, the reason you might use this as a mic technique rather than with your voice is because when you fade in or out of notes using your voice alone and not using a microphone, the tone changes. But if you don't want to change the tone of the voice, but only fade it in, then you can use the microphone to do it. Let me give you an example. A beautiful slow fade in. Or likewise, you fade out. 
this one can be used a lot and it can even be used in a way to soften your high notes. Now this effect is also often used if you're gonna go for a risky note and you're not sure if your voice is on song today. It can actually be a safe way. You can actually hit the note with your microphone away and then bring the mic in closer. Now, I don't recommend using this as a general singing technique. You wanna get your singing technique right. But if you're sick or you're not feeling 100% confident and there's just that one note in the song, I've seen singers do it and it can be an effective way to get around it. Let me give you an example. You might, for instance, go, you might be singing, you're singing your song, you gotta go for a high note. So you back off the mic, you put your finger to your ear so you can hear it. Then you bring the mic closer once you know you've nailed that note, you've brought it in. But again, I must stress, you don't wanna do it for that reason very often. Really, you wanna be utilizing this technique as a stylistic choice. The final technique I'm gonna talk about today is what I call the wave. I'm not sure if there's an official word for it, but this technique is often used not only for a bit of a quirky stylistic choice, but often in regards to proving that the singer is not lip syncing. Here's a few clips showing the technique I'm talking about. As you could see, it gives it a quirky sound and it can be utilized for that reason. But I actually think the reason singers do it is a demonstration, as I said earlier, that they're not lip syncing. Because if you were lip syncing, you wouldn't be able to perfectly do that even if you'd practiced, or at least it would be incredibly difficult. Really, all it is, is as the video suggests, it's simply as easy as waving the microphone in front, back and forth. Now, in reality, a lot of these techniques, particularly the first four, are used in conjunction. Volume control, transient control, proximity effect, they're all used constantly as the singer hones in with their ear, trying to find the tone that they're looking for to come through the front of house speakers, to come through the microphone, and in ultimately to the listener's ear. Now, here are a few bonus kind of tips for implementing these techniques at a live performance. You wanna make sure that the sound guy is aware of how you use your voice. Now, obviously, when you're playing a lot of live performances, they won't be. So questions such as, do they use a high pass filter? And if so, how high do they use it? Do they use any gating on the channels? How much compression do they use? These kinds of things can help you know how much mic technique you should use. Now, a high pass filter I mentioned, what that does is it gets rid of a lot of the low frequencies, meaning the exaggeration of the proximity effect will be reduced because it's already blocking out a lot of low frequencies. Gating, for instance, will often get in the way of using your fade ins and outs. Now what gating is, is it tries to get rid of any noise under a certain threshold. In other words, under a certain point, it just chops the sound off. It's used to minimize kind of background noise and, and noise that comes through the microphone when it isn't being used. But that can also interfere with fade ins or fade outs or low level noises. And finally, if something is compressed a lot, it means that the volume is squished together a lot. Again, meaning your volume controls and your transient controls are gonna be less effective and it might not be as worthwhile using as much microphone technique. Now that might sound very technical, but you might need to know about that stuff because again, it's all about finding the best technique of the microphone with your sound system, with the guy who's doing the sound in order to maximize the listening experience for your listeners. So I hope that was helpful. Again, your sound guy is always your friend and most of them are very kind and are willing to have a quick chat with you before you perform about what they've got on. And if any of that was Chinese to you, 
my recommendation would be go look up and learn about some of this stuff because as a singer or a performer, it's very important to know about it so that you can get the most out of your performances and wow those audiences. Are there any techniques that I left off that perhaps I should have mentioned? Uh, in the comments, let me know what that is. And also let me know in the comments which technique you didn't know about and that you found interesting. And if you have any other comments or, or questions, please leave them below and I will look to answer them as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.